Okay, we're going to talk you through the last little piece of relative motion. This one's a little bit different than before. Uh, we're going to consider two completely separate objects and they're just independently moving of each other across the ground. We'll have our stationary observer again. This is kind of like you guys, you're standing still relative to the camera. So you'll see the same sort of perspective as what Marie sees over here. But we're going to have these two cars moving kind of independently of each other. The way I typed it, I suggested that we have one car going forward at 80 and another car going forward at 80. Think way back to the start of this topic when we started talking about relative motion. If we say that something's going 80, uh, really what that means is from the perspective of someone on the ground, they see the car zooming by at 80 relative to them but we could flip that. Someone in the car could argue that they're not moving, everything in the car is standing still, and this person that used to be our stationary observer, um, they're moving backwards at 80, the same number opposite direction. The other car way over here also going 80, the observer on the ground would say car's going by at 80 to the right. Car could argue, no, I'm standing still, you're going by 80 to the left. That's a frame of reference things. Um, we started with that, hopefully it clicked way back then but we're gonna build off of that. The question now is, what we're gonna push forward, is what does it look like if we change to the perspective of a car and look at the other car? If we jump to the perspective of this car, we know that Marie's going backwards, but when we jump to the perspective of this car, what does the other car look like? Starting off with these numbers, it might be intuitive, but I'm gonna do a vector solution. Remember, we picture vectors as arrows, so I'm gonna do kind of an arrow di diagram to help you see why we see what we see. Basically, when we jump into the perspective of a car, really what we're doing is we're adding the opposite. So if this car was going 80 to the right, if I add an 80 to the left, that gives me an idea of what it looks like inside that car. I can't just add an 80 to the left to one thing, I've gotta add it to everything. So if I add an 80 to the left to Marie, since she wasn't moving, this is kind of our little explanation, not moving, but add an 80 to the left. This is a little vector explanation for why we see her moving 80 to the left. If I add an 80 to the left to the other car, when we add vectors, you always connect the very, very starting point to the very, very ending point. 80 to the left, sorry, yeah, 80 to the right and an 80 to the left, they're gonna cancel out to make zero. There's a quick little vector explanation if these cars are going at the same speed, they're both going at 80, they would see Marie drifting backwards at 80, but relative to each other, they would say the other car isn't moving. If the cars were close enough together, someone in the green car could reach out and touch the other car without hurting their hand, because relative to each other, they're not moving. <clears throat> Marie wouldn't want to reach out and touch the car, because relative to the car, Marie's going backwards at 80. That would hurt her hand. But if they're going the same speed, then relative to each other, the distance between them isn't changing, so we say they're not moving relative to each other. On the document, <clears throat> I changed the speed and I said, what if this guy's only going 70? You maybe were able to do it intuitively, but here's kind of the vector diagram explanation of why. If we want to jump into the perspective of this car, we have to add the opposite of its velocity. So adding the 80 to the left brings this to a zero, brings her going backwards at 80. When I add an 80 to the left to this one, vector sum means you connect the very, very start to the very, very end. This top line was 80. So the 80 and the 70 combine, it's a subtraction to make 10 kilometers per hour. Happens to be pointing to the left. If the black car's driving at 80 and the green car's driving at 70, between the two, they see each other moving at 10 kilometers per hour, and the black car would see the green cars going backwards at 10. So even though they're both going down the road, the black one a little bit faster, really what they say between the two is this green car going backwards at 10. If they were like front to back like this, if the black car driver looked in his rear view mirror, if he focused all of his attention on the green car, you just see it sort of drifting backwards at a rate of 10. If we switched it, if the black car was behind the green car, it would see the green car, like his dashboard camera, would see the green car getting closer and closer and closer at a rate of 10. 
when objects are going the same direction, when we jump into the perspective of one of them, the way we add the opposite, it leads to an overall subtraction. The difference between 80 forward and 70 forward is 10 backward. Or if we jumped in the perspective of the green car, the green car would see the black car moving away from it at a rate of 10, either in front of it getting farther away, or if we did it this way, uh, behind it getting closer and closer, but still the same number, 10. So same direction, the way we add the opposite, it ends up in overall slower speed. I didn't type this, but if we do the opposite scenario, what if the cars are coming towards each other? What if we've got this car going 80, this car going 70, but they're coming towards each other? What's the overall relative velocity if the cars are approaching each other? We'll stick with the 70 and the 80. Intuitively, you may know it. A head-on crash is usually pretty severe. I'm gonna have the cars do a near miss, but same idea, it'd be pretty dramatic. If I wanna jump into the reference frame of the black car, we always add the opposite. So add the opposite to the 80, that brings that to a rest. That explains why we don't, inside the black car, you don't see it as moving. We add the same to Marie, that kind of explains why we see Marie as going backwards, but at the same number. But we have to add the same, add the opposite, if we're jumping into the frame of the 80, we need to add a backwards 80 to the other vehicle as well. Connect the very, very start to the very, very end. That combines to make a much quicker 150 kilometers per hour. If we were in the, in the black car, and when we zoom by Marie, we'll see Marie go backwards at 80. That's pretty bad. You wouldn't want a high five. That would kind of hurt. When we consider the green car, if we're in the black car, we would see the green car come zipping by at 150. We see our velocity plus its velocity when it's a head-on crash. So the green car coming by, you definitely wouldn't want a high five then. It's as if you're standing still and that one's approaching at 150 kilometers per hour. If we had a dashboard cam, we would see this one coming towards us at 150. If we flipped positions and looked out the rear view mirror, we would see this one moving away from us at 150. The bottom line is, to jump from perspective to perspective, we need to add the opposite. When vehicles are going the same direction, generally speaking, that leads to a subtraction. In the same direction, 80 and 70 really is a difference of 10. But when objects are coming towards each other, the difference in their velocity actually leads to an addition. An 80 and a 70 combine to make a relative of 150. Take a look at the solutions for those problems I've posted and hopefully that'll make it click even better.